Wow, do I hate technology. Uh, I just spent 40 minutes on uh, thinking I was recording a video when my Zoom camera decided to stop 20 minutes in. And that was a waste of time, and I was talking for 20 minutes to nothing, to the air. So I'm kind of pissed off about that, and uh, however, I didn't want this uh, day to be for nothing. So uh, I'm going to um, do a request here. Uh, Steve Smith, I think it was, asked me, um, well, I mentioned in the Mixing Mo's video, I, did, I demonstrated a um, jazz blues progression. And uh, so I'm going to do that right now. Um, and you'll be able to see what I'm doing. I'm not going to do a full tilt analysis on the chord changes, but what I will do is describe some of the forms I'm using, and then um, I'll upload the, um, when I get a chance, I'll upload the uh, chord graphs for each of the chords I'm using, along with the chart for it. So this is a B-flat blues, and one thing jazzers love to do is change things up. So instead of a dominant seventh chord, we're using a major seven chord softens it up, but it still follows blues form and it sounds okay. So, you know, uh, so we're in B flat, we're at the sixth flat fret doing a major seven form. And by the way, I will be uploading a chart called commonly used jazz forms for a guitar. Um, these jazz forms will get you through the real book. If you've heard that, heard of that book, it's kind of the jazzers Bible. Um, yeah, so uh, those chords will be the most commonly used. People like Joe Pass use them. Of course, he uses more advanced chords, too. But these will definitely get you by in a lot of jazz once I upload that. That's for the future, because that's connected with something called four-note chord theory, and I want to educate you in that before I just throw, throw that out to you. Anyway, here's the demo of the jazz blues. One, two, three, and... I'll take it again. One, two, three, and... Okay, so that's one round, that's one chorus of it, and of course that could be repeated along. So I'm doing a B-flat major 7 at the 6th fret, an E-flat 9 at the 6th fret, and some guy's bar like that, that's fine too. I like to do it like this, I don't, don't even ask me why, I don't know. Um, then we move up to an E diminished 7, then back to our B-flat major 7, then we have a 2, two what would have been a 2-5, it's a a 2 to a tritone substitution of the 5, so we get F minor 9 here at the 8th fret, E9 at the 7th, E flat 9 at the 6th fret, back to our E diminished 7, wait, um, yeah, and then we have, this is B flat 13, this is A, 7 sharp 5, A flat 13, G7 sharp 5, now, I jump to a C minor 7 up here, and I do, the whole line is, oh, sorry. If you want to hear a lot of that walking bass with chord playing, Joe Pass was the absolute master. Nobody touches Joe Pass. He was a genius beyond genius. Um, okay. All right, so to go through um, B flat major 7, E flat 9, E diminished 7, B flat major 7, F minor 9, E 9, E flat 9, E diminished 7, B 13, A 7 sharp 5, A flat 13, G 7 sharp 5, C minor, and so I'm, I like this form because it leaves my first finger and my pinky free to add stuff in. But on this one, I'm going to do a walking bass. So I'm at the E string at the root C. Then I stretch my first finger over to the fifth fret of the A string, throwing in that very dissonant sounding the way it is. But when in passing, it's fine. Then I keep moving up chromatically. So 
that's an F9. Now that's G going up to B flat from the third fret chromatically. Um, now let's look at that. That is a classic jazz turnaround. And uh, you know, it's interesting. There's a Beethoven symphony that repeats that line over and over again on uh, on the in the string section. So Beethoven had a look into the future, I guess, because that uh, that was really wild when I heard that the first time. Like, dude, where'd you get that from? Anyway, to get that effect. I'm hitting the root of the B flat 13 chord, hitting an A flat note standalone. I'm hitting the G uh, G7 sharp five, the standalone root, then upstroke to get the chord. Now a D flat standalone note, which brings me back down to the C minor nine. Then an F sharp to F. And that's my F7 sharp 5. So we get. All right. Uh, soloing through this, don't think about it right now. Unless you just play blues. B minor pentatonic will work on this. One of these days I'll demonstrate. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, one more time, just a demo of that. One chorus of it. One, two, three, and. cliche jazz chord is. That's a, that's a B flat 9. If I were to do a, a, here's a B9, right? And when I traverse over to B flat, I have to lower it a half step. Notice now the D, str the, uh, the D string is taking over where my finger would have been. But I want the high E string to ring, so instead of this bar down here, I'm using the third finger and pinky on the G and B strings. I'm blocking out muting the low E. And voila! If you have any questions about this, uh, feel free to ask. I'm going to, like I said, upload the chart and the chord graphs for that. Okay, have a good one, guys.